Hi, this is um, Dr. Sandra Gikatane giving you lecture one on plastic depositional systems. Depositional systems include uh, multiple processes producing um, sediments of related sedimentary phases, and they can be identified geographically. Um, we can look at nearshore depositional systems, then marine or deep marine de depositional systems, and on land you also have glacial systems and fluvial depositional systems. There are um, three general types of depositional systems, the first one being terrestrial, which is uh, occurring on land. We have transitional environments, partly on land and part ocean. And the third one would be marine, which uh, site are oceans and seas. Characteristics of um, plastic system, they can be distinguished geomorphologically or depending on the tectonic setting. Um, we will describe the different uh, the dominant sedimentary processes and the phases. Um, they are characterized by subdividing surfaces, could be unconformities or disconformities, and they can be distinguished by the type of lithology, even the sedimentary structures, the geometry, for example, confined versus open, and they have their own distinguishing fauna and flora. Terrestrial positional systems Examples are luvial fan, luvial, aeolian, and lavian. First, we discuss about alluvial fans. Um, it is basically um, a fan shaped morpho morphology. Uh, we have here the accumulation of, um, of sediments where there is a, a rapid change in gradient and uh, the reduction of gradient causes the deposition of sediments at the base of mountain ranges. Alluvial fans tend to be coarse grained, especially on the upper head of the fan, and their edges, however, can be relatively finer grained. This is an alluvial fan architecture. We have here a series of diagrams, A, B, and C. And A uh, shows the cross-section of an alluvial fan system. It consists of lobes stacked on top of the other. And the deposits that can be found in a in alluvial fan vary from debris flows uh, to debris flow levy deposits. We have also uh, stream channel deposits and sieve deposits and stream flood and channel deposits. So in this uh, diagram in B, you can see um, how these types of deposits are distributed within the fan. You can see that um, normally the, the upper head or upper part of the fan is characterized by um, debris flows, whereas um, the distal or distal, distal part of the fan is characterized by, um, by stream or sheet flows. Um, C shows the cross-section of a, an alluvial fan, and you can see the different types of um, interlayered deposits uh, that occur as stringers. Here, it shows the, the stream profile, and it intersects a point where you have mostly uh, water draining from the from the river that feeds the alluvial fan. So in here, this is the cross section of the fan head, and here we have mid fan and fan base. You can see the transition of the different phases of deposits from the the base of the mountain and farther away. Uh, and these deposits in the base, in the fan base, can um, be interbedded or intercalated with uh, lake deposits, floodplain deposits, and even dunes. 
Um, this diagram shows a topography of a typical uh, alluvial fan system. And you have here a contrast of the topography from the source, which is characterized by rugged topography. And at the break in slope, we have the deposition of sediments of the alluvial fan system. And it is its shape is fan and even the, the contours are defined here, where you have more gentle topography at the base and increasing um, slope as you go up to the fan head. Alluvial fan depositional systems, normally they are formed at the exit of drainage basins from the mountain front. Uh, there are two main processes involved in this system, gravity flows and fluid flows. Gravity produces debris flows. Fluid flows are normally related to sheet floods. So these are the specific processes that occurring in the alluvial fan depositional system uh, that include debris flows, hyperconcentrated flows, uh, formation of fluvial channels, and sheet floods. The two underlying processes are the main um, processes in alluvial fan deposition. Lobe switching is also common to produce the cone shape morphology. Uh, we have basically radial sediment dispersal and there is a decreasing grain size downslope of the fan. Further on alluvial fan architecture, um, we have here the phases associations. The symbols um, show feeder channel, distributary channel, and sheet flood, aeolian flood basins. So we have here a series of sections uh, showing the changes from the fan head to the fan front or the edges of the fan. So here we have number one and number two section, number three and number four and number five. So can see, you can see the changes in the stratigraphy and the phases that are involved in the uh, alluvial fan architecture. This is an example of a stratigraphic log of a deposit uh, that can be found at the head of the fan. This is uh, a section of a debris flow. It is chaotic, class supported, sometimes matrix supported, disorganized, ungraded. It has a sharp base. Um, and it can be an un unchannelized base. Some erosion can be seen. Sometimes you don't see any evidence of that. And sometimes due to searing, you can observe an inverse grating at the base of this debris flow deposit. Um, we have large class here, mostly uh, made up of um, gravel and boulders. And at the top of the debris flow deposit, we have evidence of stream deposition. And this section here represents the waning states of the current. Sometimes this, the deposits um, exhibit cross lamination or cross bedding. And then following the, uh, this deposit, the deposition of debris flow, another, another uh, event of debris flow, this in this in, this in this case, it shows a slightly erosive contact, but sharp. A typical example of uh, debris flow deposits. We have series of beds here that's quite uh, thick. Uh, you don't see much of the finer grain spaces, but there are some cross bedded sands here. Um, this is quite uh, common at the apex of uh, alluvial fan deposits. This is a stratigraphic log of a deposit that is found somewhere in the middle of the, of the alluvial, alluvial fan. And it, it is characterized by deposits that are still coarse grained, um, characterized by, by erosional base, forming channels, 
And the deposit itself is, is no longer matrix supported, but it is more of class supported with good imbrication. Um, you can have uh, thick and irregular beds, but at the top of this, uh, of this deposit, it is characterized by cross-bedded sand and it represents the waning fl flow deposit. Um, this particular section uh, is an example of a hyper-concentrated um, deposits. They are more organized compared with debris flow deposits because um, they are more, um, they contain more water in contrast with debris flow deposits. You can have another, another section or another deposit showing uh, similar stratigraphy, similar texture. But you can have also debris flow deposits which was shown earlier in an earlier. These are sections of, this is a section of um, the hyperconcentrated stream deposits that are quite common in the middle part of the fan. You can also, you, can, you also notice that um, there are more fine grain sediments um, in this section in contrast to the ones that are um, related to the upper fan area where mostly dominated by debris flow deposits. This is a cross section of the deposits in the and uh, another peculiar deposit that are associated with alluvial fund deposits are sieve deposits. They are mostly uh, found after the intersection point of many alluvial fans. These sieve deposits are normally composed of gravel and um, boulders that are fines depleted. Um, basically, they are class supported. And sometimes many alluvial fans are composed entirely of sieve deposits. To explain the, the origin of sieve deposits, there are two um, contrasting school of thoughts. The first one being that sieve deposits uh, are products of the winnowing out of fines in a debris flow. So it means that the original um, process is debris flow, but because of the removal of fines, it produces the sieve deposits. The other idea is that um, it is simply that uh, there is a poor drainage in the in the flow such that uh, water can easily escape it. The, the deposit itself is highly permeable and therefore the fine materials are removed. This is a vertical profile of cyclic alluvial fan deposits showing a coarsening upward sequence. Of course, you can also get finding, finding a sequence in an alluvial fan deposit, but it is basically dominated by coarsening upward sequence as depicted in this uh, series of stratigraphic. Uh, to summarize, um, you can distinguish the different phases in, a, in an alluvial fan deposit. Um, here we have uh, at least six phases that can define the upper fan, medium gravel mid fan, and the fine gravel mid fan. And most of the coarse gravel or medium gravel are observed in the upper fan area. And in the middle area, mostly medium gravel and fine gravel. You can have also the plain bedded sand. And at the, the, the mid fan area, which is the farthest from the, from the sediment source, would be characterized mostly by cross bedded sand or, and rippled sand and very little fine gravel or medium gravel deposits. What are the diagnostic features of alluvial fans? They are found in mountain belts and other highland undergoing rapid uplift. Uh, as for the geometry, it is, gen it is wedge shape um, and it's limited. Typical sequence is coarsening upward sequences. Uh, 
composed of cross bedded sandstones, conglomerates, and unsorted debris flow deposits. Um, as for the sedimentology, uh, we have mostly boulders or clay sized particles down the fan. Conglomerates and cross bedded sandstones are quite common. And the uh, debris flows are poorly sorted. Sometimes they show reverse grading. For uh, the sedimentology, uh, sieve deposits are quite common, um, but they form lenticular bodies composed of uh, conglomerates and cross bedded sands. Channel cut or channel fill and channel fill uh, structures can be, can be common. Uh, we have also ripple marks and convolute laminations that occur in finer grained um, sheet flat de deposits. Sediments can be immature, they can be angular, uh, abundant coarse grain fragments, and filled spars. Fossils are the characteristics of a alluvial fan system. Normally, the sediments show fining upward within the fan lobes. Uh, sand bodies can form between lobes and the deposits is a mix of fluvial input and mass sediment movement or landslides. The faces can exhibit erosional surfaces. Um, they, these are formed during migrating fan lobe fill or changes in the base level and changes in sediment yield. The sediments are poor to well sorted, lithic boulders, gravels, and sands. Sedimentary structures, uh, they exhibit finding upward cycles that coarsen up as depositors of lobes prograde. They can also exhibit um, up deep channel or cut and fill structures. The sediments are uh, dipping seaward as thin parallel low bed sheets and uh, in terms of geometry, they are characterized by confined incised channels. Um, flora and flora, mostly terrestrial, and they are commonly found in overbank deposits. That ends the lecture for alluvian fan system. Thank you.